Hey there folks, welcome to this video and here we'll be reviewing for the Japanese Grand Prix and Suzuka which has just wrapped up the 17th round of this season's Formula 1 World Championship where Valtteri Bottas has picked up his third win of the season. Which means he pulls ahead of Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen who both had two. And I'm going to have a couple of talking points for this one. Um, not necessarily talking about qualifying because I accidentally slept through it because of well, the reorganisation of it. But we're going to be talking about um, well the collision on the first lap. I'm going to be talking about the collision on the last lap. And a couple of little bits in between. So first off, let's talk about the start. Sebastian Vettel um, appeared to nearly jump the start. Well, he got going before the uh, lights went out but stopped the car before he crossed the red line, I believe. Um, which meant that he didn't necessarily earn himself a penalty. Now Verstappen has disputed this, saying uh, something to do with the FIA legislation. I don't know if that's going to be carried out. I'm doing a very much instant race reaction. If these penalties do get carried out towards Ferrari, I will talk about them in another video. Um, granted, the fact that it's Ferrari means they're very likely not going to be um, doing that, but also because of the fact that it could potentially affect the final race results. And I would say the Vettel not winning the race is punishment enough. Um, he was basically consigned to second place from that start. Bottas just took off. And Lewis Hamilton in third. Now, I was so annoyed having to listen to so much complaining from Hamilton over the radio. It was like what Charles Leclerc was doing in um, Singapore and more so in Sochi. It was just constantly thinking, why is this happening? Why is this happening? I know that's what Lewis was thinking. I know that he was thinking that because he felt like he wasn't put on the prime strategy. But it was a gamble. They they converted a one-stop plan into a two-stop race. And it's better to put the second driver first. It's also better to give the driver in the lead of the race the first choice. I mean, this has been the kind of issue that Ferrari have been grappling with, but it traditionally will be the driver in the lead of the race that gets the first call. And obviously it worked out for Valtteri. Personally, I think if they decided to pit Lewis in first, he would have been like, why have I been pitted so early? Because I think Bottas probably still would have had the pace to win the race. He was just on it today. And actually, that was very much the thing for the second drivers in each of the top three teams. Alexander Albon, in his first appearance at Suzuka in an F1 car, brought it home in fourth place, albeit a minute off the lead, but it was still in fourth place. That is fantastic. It's, it's a very well done job for Alex, and it's exactly what Red Bull should have expected of him. And sure, it was a gain through Leclerc and Verstappen coming together, but it was well done nevertheless. And let's talk about that coming together. Now, I think it's worth treating separately to the collision that uh, Pierre Gasly and Sergio Perez had. And that's because of the fact that um, whilst, there was, uh, whilst there was a bit of a difference in how one was at the start, one was at the end. The main difference, the one that strikes me the most, is the fact that Leclerc and Verstappen were very much alongside, and it was mostly understeer that caused the issue for Leclerc. Now, I could understand if he gets a 5 second time penalty because that means he keeps the 6th place. Verstappen probably wanted a 10 second one which drops him behind Ricardo, but I guess earlier in the season, I would have been more likely to go, yeah, I get why that would be a penalty. But post-Austria, I'd say it was just rough racing. I know Verstappen is of the opinion, oh, this was definitely not rough racing, but I, I feel like this is the price you have to pay to get some amazing on-track action. And in talking about this, I will talk about the um, Gasly and Perez incident. Um, for me, Gasly came from far behind. As much as it was the Checo closed the door and you could easily dismiss both incidents, racing incidents, if you're going to penalise one, it's more likely going to be Pierre's, which puts 
a bit of a dampener on what has been an amazing weekend because, well, this is what I was saying. I was saying keep an eye out for Toro so, and Kvyat finishing 12th was a decent finish for him. He also got some good press because um, he got covered in a battle between Vettel and Hamilton. Albeit because he was mistaken um, between him and Pierre. It was a mistake that the commentators made where they thought that Pierre was Daniel for some reason. But Kvyat still delivered a strong performance, so I think I was quite good, much like in Sochi, to say, watch out for this team. Because Gasly did very well to get into Q3, and then also delivered very well in the race. But that means I've glossed over two very good finishes. The first one, spectacular, again, another P5 for Carlos Sainz. Honestly, that's very well done for him. Um, again, one way you could say I benefited from the kind of crash on the first lap. But he still didn't get lapped. Only the top five finished on the lead lap. So, honestly, well done to Carlos for what was a very, very solid drive to yet another fifth place. And Daniel Ricciardo in seventh. Very well done by Danny Rick. Um, still showing that the Renault is lacking compared to the McLaren. But he was able to get past the drivers when they did their driver swap between Hulkenberg and Ricardo later in the race. So he was trying to get past, say, the racing points, and he managed to prove that. And I think those are the main talking points I want to look at right now. Um, and I will say some caveats, not caveats, <laughs> on the, um, though quite fitting given I'm talking about collisions, on the claim that I'm making that it's kind of the day of the second driver, which is that two of the second drivers had collisions, first one being Albon and Lando, but of course the one happened first in the race was Leclerc and Verstappen. But I don't think that should detract from the fact that they both had brilliant drives through to pretty good finishes. Though the fact that Leclerc was able to claw back to P6 shows how dominant the top three teams are in Formula 1 nowadays. And well that's that because I said this is going to be a very brief race reaction and well look at the length of it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye bye for now.